Sound. Well, Indonesia is grappling with a growing refugee burden since an Australian policy change last year. More than 5,000 people are not receiving support and are struggling to survive in a country where they're not allowed to work, study or even open a bank account. Well, some of them have had to live on the streets. Southeast Asia correspondent Ann Barker reports from Jakarta. Until last month, this footpath was home for Parisa Mohammadi. At night, sleeping rough metres from the passing traffic, by day, wondering where her next meal would come from. We don't have any other place to stay. Our money has finished, we come to on the streets. The 13-year-old dreams of becoming an astronaut. Now she's not even able to go to school. Parisa and her parents are refugees, Afghan Hazaras who fled the Taliban and came to Indonesia hoping to be settled in Australia or another country. With no money and no right to work, they joined hundreds more asylum seekers at Caladeres in Jakarta, hoping to be locked up in the immigration centre across the road, where at least they'd have food and a bed. Because in the street, uh, every people get sick, and uh, some of us get skin problems. <laughs> Mohammed Ibrahim is just as desperate to keep his family off the street. One son has lost patches of hair because of the squalid conditions. There isn't a toilet, so he takes the boys to a public washroom blocks away. It's here. Go. Go and I go to doctor. Doctor said it's a skin problem because dirty. Mohammed Ibrahim too had hoped to be incarcerated, but detention is no longer an option since Australia last year cut funding to the UN Migration Agency to provide food and support to asylum seekers inside. Since March last year, anyone registering with the UN no longer qualifies for support. This IOM was giving like $100 a month for basic financial support for people registered with the UNHCR. That was cut uh, in March last year. So the people who are arriving after that date are completely destitute. Of the 14,000 refugees and asylum seekers in Indonesia, at least 5,000 get no help from the UN, even though many are recognised refugees from Afghanistan, Pakistan and countries in Africa. Some arrived after the cut-off date, others failed to register in time. The most vulnerable at Caladeres, sick, pregnant or with babies, were allowed to squat in this derelict building, effectively reduced to begging. When we came here, we didn't knew that we are not allowed to study, we are not allowed to work. 16-year-old Nilofar Jamal and her parents came to Indonesia three years ago, refugees who fled Pakistan after a bombing that's left her mother traumatised. Their lives are in limbo as they wait in vain to be resettled in a third country. UNICEF, IOM, they said maybe you will stay in Indonesia for 25 years without working. The UN revealed last year as few as 1% of refugees in Indonesia would be resettled in a third country. The rest face two bleak options, go back to the countries they fled or face years, even a lifetime in Indonesia without the right to work or study. Indonesia isn't a signatory to the Refugee Convention and has no obligation to help them. Australia has stopped accepting refugees who arrived in Indonesia after mid-2014. In desperation, refugees at Caladeras recently moved en masse to the UN building in central Jakarta. There are people who have been here for decades, others less time. But the same thing for everyone is it's just an incredibly slow pace for refugee resettlements. The UN could do nothing to help them and after two weeks the local government sent buses to remove them all to an abandoned army site. Up to 1,500 asylum seekers are now here, just around the corner from the footpath in Caladeres. Conditions are better. There are five toilets and running water and at least one meal a day. Even a library for children, though no school. 
Parisa Mohammadi and her parents now have their own room, but Indonesian authorities say it's only for one month. Beyond that, they may be back on the street. And local residents have begun a campaign against them. Because it's really next to the school, so it's not appropriate. We really want them to be relocated. Jakarta's administration has called for longer-term solutions to the refugee burden. Refugee advocates say the only real answer is for Indonesia to allow them to work and study. But in a country of 265 million, many of whom face their own struggles, that's unlikely to happen. Parisa Mohammadi at least has youth on her side and boundless optimism that one day she will reach the stars. Because it's just a short time I miss living in here. It's not just for always. One day I will get out of this condition and I can be an uh, astronaut.